Today's objective is to give you a thorough report of a mixed terrain ride with the Cannondale Topstone Lefty. Let's get after it. Oh, good lord, it's colder than I thought. Okay, some cold hard facts about this guy. This is the Cannondale Topstone Lefty 2. This build falls somewhere between a gravel bike and a mountain bike. Grounton? There are two things that make this bike particularly interesting. The integrated kingpin rear suspension, which is essentially a passive suspension system, which offers up to 30 millimeters of travel at the saddle and 10 millimeters of travel at the rear wheel, which they claim only activates when you're in the chunder, which is great. So when you're on the road, it's supposed to act exactly like a road bike. And the other thing that makes this bike unique is the Lefty Oliver, Cannondale's proprietary single arm suspension fork. This one offers 30 millimeters of suspension with a very easy to access lockout. It's set up with Shimano GRX, 11 speed, mechanical, with an 11 to 42 in the back, and something in the front. It doesn't tell me. Can you just put the number on the screen? And it's rolling on WTF Average Joe Aluminum. They're nothing special and you'll probably upgrade them. I sure would. Oh, and this thing comes with Vittoria Mescal 44s. And so you know, Cannondale did not give me this bike. This is a demo bike. Just borrowing it so I can tell you what I think about it so you can decide if you need one for yourself. on the pavement, this thing climbs like a road bike. It doesn't sag or bounce or anything. If it did do that, it would be game off, but it doesn't do that, so it is game on. Oh, there are a couple things I totally nailed on this bike. Like these mega wide, shallow drop drop bars, paired with the ergonomics of the GRX and the Physique Ergo Saddle. It's like a very comfortable cockpit. I could foresee spending several grueling bumpy hours in such a position. And speaking of the cockpit, there is one thing where I see room for improvement. There's a dropper, which we'll talk about in a bit, but the lever for the dropper is right here on the bars. It's fine where it is. It kind of gets in the way, but it is, it's not the worst spot. The thing that I don't get is why not just put it in the GRX shifter? I mean, it's a one by. This thing's just dead space. Nothing's going on over there. Why not just put the dropper on the shifter that's not being used? I'm just saying. Oh yeah, and these cables that come out of the down tube, my knee hits them when I'm pedaling out of the saddle. It's not the biggest thing, but you notice it every single pedal stroke. What the hell? So the fact that a dropper comes stock on this bike is very well played. Droppers are a highly overlooked piece on gravel bikes. I want a dropper on all the gravel bikes I ride. It's good in the dirt and in the pavement, descending for both. I did find this a little interesting about the bike. With a 700C wheel, this thing maxes out with 45s. What the hell? I mean, it's like a ramble rouser. Don't you want room to party? Come on. Let me live. With a 650, you can get up to a 2.1, which is, okay, now we're talking. There's one hook though. They don't offer this bike with a 650 build and you can't find 650s on their site. The reason that needs to be on their site is because of the lefty. The front wheel has to be a lefty hub. Normal wheels don't work. See that lefty there, there's no, there's only half of a fork. What's well, a normal wheel, how's it supposed to stay on there? I think the solution, 650 build on any of the lefties, you're fine. Or open up the rear triangle a bit and, you know, give it some room to breathe. The choice is yours. So I pulled the Strava fam and one of the top questions was, does this kingpin rear suspension feel like it does anything? The kingpin rear suspension is subtle, but it is there. But the fact that it doesn't weigh very much just says, forget it, why not? Every little bit helps. Man, there really is nothing quite like traversing this vast and great land with just the power of your own legs. 
How far did you go? Oh, I don't like to use electronics on the bike. I feel like they take away from the ethereal experience of the ride. Plus, no Garmin, no rules. But if my calculations are correct, 182, 183. Oh, good for you. The terrain keeps getting crazier, and my need for more and more chunder to keep my ever-present level of stoke high keeps increasing. I just don't think this bike can handle it. You can do any of that on a road bike. Uh, I think I'm gonna need a mountain bike to satiate my unrelenting need for stoke. Back to the pros closet. No, I'm gonna go back to the pros closet. They are the world's largest online retailer of certified pre-owned bikes. Plus, they're the only place that meets my highly evolved social and moral standards. I'm just torn. I, I don't know if I should get a soft nose or a double rump and bump. Fully set up, this thing weighs in at 25 pounds even. Considering all it has, right in there, middle weight. This thing does pretty good in the trails, but I think there's room to lean into it a little bit more. Cannondale already has the Super 6, which has the Type A race gravel already covered. I mean, this thing's already trail curious. I say, go full board, dig in, own that shit. A little less IPA, a little more champagne of beers. A little less uptown, a little more down country. A little less chic, a little more tweak. Start with the clearance. claims to do, I would say it does it. There is a funny thing about the front wheel. To take it off, you gotta hit this quick release, which takes off the brake caliper, and then you can take the bolt out of the axle to get the front wheel off. Which, hopefully you won't have to do very often, because you'll never have to take the wheel off to change a flat tire, or a tire in general, which is kinda great. So, the more you know. I would put this bike in slightly the same category as the cutthroat. I would say they're related. The cutthroat's like your uncle that lives in the country, that hunts kind of because he has to. And the top stone's like your uncle that lives in the city, has a design firm, but still gets after it every weekend. One of them lives in it, the other one participates in it. The top stone with a rigid fork can accept fenders. The top stone with a lefty cannot accept fenders. It's the lefty. You can't put a fender on it. There is mounts in the back on the frame, but that's only winning half the battle. And if there's anything I learned from G.I. Joe, is that you, you want to win the whole battle. Let's see if I can keep up with the roadies. This bike retails for $4,250, placing it firmly in the upper middle class of bicycle pricing. While that is a lot of money, you do end up getting a lot of bike in exchange. Overall, I was mostly impressed with how this bike splits its time, holding its own on the pavement and taking care of business in the chunder. Is this bike perfect? No, I don't think I've ever seen one that is. Is this bike fun? You better believe it. I enjoyed my time and I would ride again. But what about you? You got an opinion on this bike? I'm sure you do. Go ahead, drop it down below in the opinionator. Now if 4K is a little rich for your blood, I got you. Check out this video where I put a $1,500 gravel bike through the paces and let you know what I think. Was it worth it? Is it not worth it? Is it good? Is it bad? There's only one way to find out.